Hello, it's Gareth from the Iron Boot team. It is my great pleasure to, res to welcome Christina, who's going to talk about the future of connecting Moodle to Mahara. Uh, it's been connected to for years, but it's even any more involved. So thank you for your time and for putting this wonderful presentation together. Over to you. Thank you so much, Gareth. And uh, welcome to this repeat session of the um, yeah, Future of Connecting Moodle to Mahara presentation. Um, what I'd like to do today is take you through how we currently already connect Moodle to Mahara, the ePortfolio system, but then showing you kind of what the future is going to look like because we are currently making changes to that infrastructure and um, therefore making it more flexible to connect the two systems. And we'd also like to invite you to share your opinions about what you would like to see in the future for making more connections between uh, the two systems. So let's get started right with um, the introduction before I'm going to show you how you can set up the connection between Moodle and Mahara. So we'll be using screen sharing for that. And um, then uh, if you are up to looking into or uh, sharing your ideas about um, connecting the two and what you would like to see, then we can um, start the discussion right here. So we all know um, Moodle as learning management system has a wealth of information, wealth of resources and wealth of activities available that we can use with uh, students and um, also as instructors. Um, but what we sometimes can't really, or we can't really do everything in Moodle because it is designed for a particular purpose. And that is where Mahara can come in really nicely because it is complementary to the learning management system and is an ePortfolio system. Like Moodle, it is also open source. And um, what it was designed for was really as a personal learning environment so that you could um, so that learners are in control of what they want to share, what they want to keep of their learning, and also with whom they want to share it, as well as how they want to represent that. In this year's iMode session, I'm not going into much more detail about the functionality of Mahara, how to set up a portfolio, how to work with it, like I did in previous iModes. Um, if there's interest for that, we can look into that uh, towards the end of the session. What I'd really like to focus on is the connection between the two. Because both systems are very feature rich and um, are being used in learning context, that of course also means that there is an, quite a bit of overlap in the functionality between the two. So we have um, forums both on the Moodle side, on the Mahara side. Um, both systems have profiles, pages, dashboard pages. Um, you can message people, you can receive notifications, you can engage in discussions, you can share files and the like. So why would you still want to connect both of them? Well, um, Moodle, as the name already says, is a learning management system. So it is more to geared towards the management of learning and also facilitating formal learning contexts in particular, whereas Mahara is um, for the learner. There they can really decide how they want to represent their learning and also, as I mentioned earlier, with whom they want to share it. And um, these two systems can live really well next to each other but they can also be used in, in the same learning context and in the same learning scenarios. Because while personal learning environments are really good for students to express themselves, to show their progress, or to show off what they have learned, um, oftentimes they can also be very good um, directly for assignments. And students can create little projects either on their own or collaboratively and then share them in the LMS for the lecturer to give them a grade or to give them feedback on. And um, that is where the connection between both systems comes in really nicely um, so that we can take advantage of the benefits of both. 
namely the management side from water, where we have great book fa facilities, where we have assessment, um, where we have rubrics in order to grade students in, in a very nice informative way. And then on the Mahada side, where we collect our learning evidence in a different way than would be possible in Moodle. So what, how can we now connect those two systems? Um, I believe Gareth and Kerry, you are already familiar with um, Moodle, and also well, Moodle, of course, um, but also with Mahara. So um, how, how we can connect the two systems is initially via single sign-on, um, so that we can make it easy for students and also lecturers to jump directly from Moodle into Mahara without the need for another login and password. That really facilitates the connection between the two and makes it easy for everyone to just jump into their portfolios. However, that is just one part of the connection. Once you have set up um, Moodle networking at the moment, you can also transfer content. So you can take forum posts that you have written and put them into your portfolio by clicking um, through in Moodle to the export of portfolio or you can also um, move your glossary entries and other co content that you have created in the LMS and want to keep in Mahara. On the flip side of it, of course, you can also do assignment submission. That is not available in core Moodle, but via the Mahara assignment submission plugin that exists for Moodle. And that makes it very easy for you to select a portfolio that you created in Mahara and use that in a Moodle assignment so that it can be graded, that you can run your rubric across it, and also that any grade that you give ends up in the Moodle uh, gradebook. So currently, that is being done via Moodle networking, or oftentimes referred to as MNet. And um, because this connection is really, really tight between Moodle and Mahara, it is oftentimes lovingly also referred to as Mahwoodle so that we kind of combine both systems. However, Moodle networking um, is an old standard, um, is an old protocol, and is very specific to Moodle itself. And whenever we want to make changes, we really need, can only make those changes for Moodle, but not be, available, uh, not be able to connect Mahara to any other learning management system um, that should also have similar functionality. And that's where the future comes in, because um, on the way in is now LTI, the making the connection to Mahara via learning tools interoperability standards. And at the moment, we already have the single sign-on working for that. And that is the first part that I'm going to demonstrate to you how to set it up, because we just released that um, at the end of April, in Mahara 17.04. So if you are going to use um, LTI, then you will need to upgrade to the latest version of Mahara. It is better than the other versions anyway, because it has evolved. Like um, Moodle also evolves from version to version and makes improvements. And so it is uh, really nice to see that connection now being available because we can be much more flexible than if we used MNET for it. So let me show you how you can actually set that up. So I'm just turning the webcam off and um, turning the screen sharing on. So just give it a second. You should be seeing my screen now. Um, Gareth or Kerry, if you can just please let me know in the chat. Um, perfect, thank you. Hi Miriam. And um, if the screen is too small for you to see, um, simply click on the display actual size and then it'll make it bigger. It might um, go a little bit into the chat, but um, hopefully that's not going to be too bad. And please do feel free to use your microphone and interrupt me at any point in time. Okay, 
Here I'm now in my Mahara instance. Um, I'm actually in the administration area in Web Services and there I'm on external apps because that's where I set up the connection between Moodle and Mahara. I can say which application I want to add and let's just say that is Moodle and also in which institution I would like to add that connection. And the third part is that I just use um, just a second. Oops. I first should actually turn it on. So if, if I have not turned it on, I can just go to plugin administration. I'm using a slightly different site this morning for it because last night I realized that, that I was showing quite a lot of consumer keys and consumer secrets. So give it a second. So per default, LTI is not enabled on the site when you, uh, when you start out with um, a new Mahara 1704, when you upgraded the site. Um, simply because it's new functionality, so we don't usually turn that on automatically. But give um, our administrators the possibility to make that decision whether they want to turn it on or not. Once it is turned on, you can simply click the configuration icon and then check that the plugin is actually enabled. In my case, it is. All web services are a go. So I can go straight into the administration and web services section to external apps. Okay. Now again, I can give my application a name. Doesn't have to be Moodle, can be um, LMS or anything. It's just if you have multiple of these LTI connections set up that you can distinguish them. And then I have LTI integration at the bottom. Click add. and then it sets up the connection. The next screen is just a confirmation screen that you can see. Um, there's nothing really to change, so you can simply scroll all the way to the bottom and click the back button. The one area where you do need to make a change is on the manage icon. Um, because it is usually a good idea to allow for auto creation of accounts so that when a student clicks the link to Mahara in Moodle that their account is created automatically if it doesn't already exist. Um, for Mahara 17.10 we are also going to have um, the possibility to link the LTI authentication to another authentication method so that you can log in both via Mahara as well as Moodle and end up in the same account. So you can hook up LTI to your LDAP, Active Directory, single sign-on or even internal Mahara accounts and allow for students to, when they get a notification from Mahara, to go to the Mahara homepage log into there, um, but when they come through Moodle, click the LTI link and also still end up in the same account. Currently, there's a little bit of fiddling to do. Um, if you want to hook up both uh, two authentication methods, LTI and another one, to your account, but it is already achievable, only with the new version it'll be easier. And of course, you could also backport that functionality to Mahara 17.04. So now that I have my setup, um, and you saw how easy it is, just filling in, um, just deciding on three things in the, in the session. Let me just go back. Um, can you all still see? Yeah, okay. So it seems like we, we are back online. I just saw some connectivity issues here. Um, so what you just saw is very quickly done, just um, a couple of 
pieces of information that you need to put in and your setup is done on the Mahada site. Now let's actually go into Moodle. So when you are in a course in Moodle, um, you can add a link to Mahara directly as an activity because it is being set up as external tool in this case. And uh, when you click that, I've set it up so that it opens in a new window. And then you're logged in. Just briefly checking in with you if you can still see everything or if I'm talking to myself. Great, thank you, Gareth. Um, so this is what we are going to set up now on the Moodle side of things. So if I go back into my Moodle course and click Turn Editing On, and then go into the Assignment Settings, Then you um, see that it has been set up as external tool. And all I need to do is give it a name. And then I chose automatic based on launch URL. And under show more, you have a bit more information that you would need to provide. And in that case is the secret launch URL, uh, secure launch URL. Um, so that you can make the, that is the link to your Mahada site so that Moodle knows where it needs to connect to. And um, I'm using the secure launch URL because uh, Mahada is on an HTTPS, so it has um, an SSL certificate and that is necessary if you want to use web services in Mahara in order to secure the connection. Then as launch container, I decided to choose new window, um, which typically opens it in a new tab. And that I find is important uh, because then you don't have the Moodle navigation around it, besides also having the entire Mahara navigation, and you have more screen real estate available. You could also open it in an existing window, so just here on top of this activity, um, but I wouldn't really recommend default embed or embed without blocks. Per default, Mahada actually also does not allow embedding um, into another site for security reasons, um, so you would need to take off a security feature if you wanted to enable that. Um, we explain how to do that in the user menu. Uh, but we wouldn't really recommend it. Then the third piece of information that you need to provide is the consumer key. That is the key that you that was auto-generated in Mahara. And then also the shared secret. Again, auto-generated in Mahara. You can simply copy and paste it in here. Then the last thing that you may want to consider changing is the icon URL. That's a really nifty feature that I'd hope were available for all activities um, because there you can decide what the icon shall be that is displayed on the course homepage. So instead of seeing that um, puzzle icon for external tool, you can actually put the Mahara logo there, which I have done. And these are all the settings that you need to do. Once you have done that, you have your activity set up. And in my case, I have the Mahara logo shown as well. So now this was the setup um, where a teacher needed to know what the consumer secret and the um, shared secret was in order to connect to Mahara. This is Good and well, if you are as teacher also the site administrator, if you're very technically, uh, if, if you have very good knowledge of the environment and are happy to provide all those parameters and find them or ask for them. However, our average teacher may not really be in that position. 
And you as um, LMS administrators also don't really want to give out consumer secrets and secu um, shared secrets all the time. Um, and therefore, there is actually an easy, easier way as well. In particular, if you want to make the portfolio available for all users across your entire Moodle platform. And for that purpose, let's set up another external tool activity. But this time, instead of choosing the pre-configured tool automatic based on launch URL, I'm going to click the little plus icon here and create a pre-configured tool so that I give it a name. Again, I need the URL. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to copy and paste that um, from the launch URL that I had set up earlier. I need my consumer secret, uh, consumer key. My shared secret. And typically, you would copy and paste these things from, um, from your Mahara site. In this case, because I already had set up um, the activity in Moodle, I'll just uh, copy it from there. Then you decide on the default launch container. In this case, again, I choose new window. And because I really like to have my Mahara logo there, I'll put that in. But you can really um, choose any any picture um, because all I had done is upload that image into my course even um, so that it was available but you can put it publicly or link to any other place where you have it. Once I'm provided all that information I save my changes and I'm silently redirected to my previous page so it just closes the window and puts my pre-configured tool um, into the activity. Now I just need to give it a name and I'm done. So if you want to make the, um, the activity for LTI um, connecting to your ePortfolio available to everybody across your organization, then setting up such a pre-configured tool will be extremely helpful because when they come along, all they need to do is click the external tool and then choose, sorry, it's a bit fiddly, choose the pre-configured one and they don't have to worry about any of these settings. And then when you click it, you are being forwarded into Mahara. Um, Gareth, you're asking, could it be improved to upload an image um, or set a Moodle core thing? Um, what image do... Oh, in, in Moodle you mean, so instead of um, providing a URL to the icon that you upload an image? Yes, um, that would certainly be a Moodle thing um, because I'm just doing that here on the Moodle activity and that could be a nice integration. Um, I think it would it would be easier because then the icon would be tied directly to it and you wouldn't have to find a place to put it first because what you need to make sure with that icon is that your students and teachers actually have access to it so that they can view it. So in my case, I put it into the course because whenever somebody's in the course, they can see it, but I had to set it up as orphaned activity. You also could put it um, in a public files folder or somewhere else. Um, directly uploading the icon might actually save you a bit more time there and ensure that it can be viewed by anybody who has access to the icon uh, or who has access to that activity. And that was essentially the setup of the single sign-on between Moodle and Mahara using LTI. Now, you might say, well, that doesn't really mean if I'm already using Moodle networking at the moment that I should change. 
Um, that can be true. So if you're just using single sign-on, you can decide whether you want to use um, LTI or MNET. If you're using the assignment submission plugin or transferring of content, you still need to use MNET because we haven't developed that functionality via LTI so far. However, um, if you are only using single sign-on to connect Moodle to Mahara, I would still consider LTI even at this moment because there is one big difference between MNET and LTI that might come in really handy for you. So say you have a big organization and um, you want to make different, or you want your learners to go into different areas in the portfolio. Um, since we have Miriam here, I'll take the example of a DHB, a district health board. Um, there we've got doctors and nurses, and um, they need to create different portfolios. So the nurses in New Zealand have a standard for their portfolios from the nursing council that they need to follow. But of course, the doctors um, don't create portfolios along these same lines, but would need to provide different portfolios. Now, if we used MNET, we would only be able to connect Moodle to one Mahara inst institution and therefore only allow them to all to go into one institution in Mahara and they would need to pick out their templates themselves. They would need to find the nursing templates, copy that and then work on it or the doctors would need to find the um, templates for themselves and then copy them into their account. Now LTI makes a huge change in that um, because as you have seen, you can connect one institution in Mahara and set up an LTI connection for that one institution and then put that consumer key and consumer secret into your Moodle site. So what you could do on Mahara is then actually set up an institution for nurses and a separate institution for doctors. Create templates for each of them and then say that these should be automatically copied into an account when they log in. So when a nurse logs in, automatically she would get her nursing portfolio template. When a doctor logs in, they are being pushed through the institution for the doctors and end up in, with templates that are um, appropriate for them. Then you can also have different themes for your different learner groups. You can have different announcements on the Mahara dashboard for them and really work very flexibly with them in their portfolio, simply because you can now push your learners into different institutions in Mahara when they come from Moodle. So that was the SSO part of the connection between Moodle and Mahara that we have already revamped. So that functionality is available in the latest stable release of Mahara. Um, but of course, there is more. As I've said before, currently MNET can still do a few more things uh, that we can't yet do in LTI. And so that's where the next phase comes in other possibilities. Um, and we would like to invite you to share your ideas for that. Because we already know that um, a number of people are very interested in the assignment submission to keep that functionality, making it possible to submit a portfolio from Mahara into Moodle connected to the assignment and um, still allow students to keep all their portfolio learning content on the Mahara site. And also um, pushing content from Moodle to Mahara would still be nice to keep when moving to LTI. But what else can you imagine? Um, should there be more integration, more feedback integration, that feedback from Mahara also goes into Moodle or the other way around? Um, should files uploaded to Mahara also be able to be chosen within Moodle, um, so kind of like an external repository. 
Um, how do you envisage the assignment submission plugin going forward? Um, is there any functionality in there that you're currently missing that should be there and that you would like to have, de um, have developed and or locked into at minimum? So right now we are in the brainstorming phase to figure out um, what the Mahara and Moodle and wider LMS community, of course, also thinks and um, gather all those ideas and discuss them in order to decide a path forward. And if you haven't yet installed Mahara, you can download it from mahara.org, install the latest version and check it out for yourself. Now, all the functionality that I've shown you of how to set up LTI on both Moodle and Mahara um, is documented in the user manual so that you can take a look there and um, um, set up this connection yourself. And then if you want to know even more integration points and ponder those, then I would recommend uh, Chris's IMO presentation that he gave on Thursday and Friday, um, because there he's talking about integrating other systems, but Moodle and Mahara, namely also learn, um, library management system Koha, for example, or even EBSCO as discovery layer and um, all these things. So there's much more um, that can be integrated in the future that goes way beyond LTI, what we are currently looking into. And if you are in the market for mulling all these things over, then please check out his presentation. And if you don't really want to discuss anything online, but rather send your ideas uh, to me directly via email and I can then share them, then please do feel free to contact me or for anything else related to Mahara. So now we still have a few minutes time. Um, please feel free to grab the mic or your keyboard and um, let's hear it if you already have some ideas of how we should improve the connection between Moodle and Mahara beyond the single sign-on. Yes, it's a very good question, and that's why we are reaching out to the to the communities in order to get um, your input. Kerry, thank you for the good intentions of wanting to start uh, Mahara last year. Um, hopefully, you'll have uh, the time to do that this year. Yes, sorry, the time certainly gets away from us at times. That's true. Thanks, Miriam, for coming again. Yeah, and we can certainly take up that um, discussion also later on via email or um, in the forums. And I think one, one thing that usually helps very much is to make an initial proposal. And because we already have the assignment submission functionality working for MNET, we do know roughly kind of the, the most important aspects that we definitely want to keep. And um, make a proposal, make that available in Mahara so that um, you can actually use it play with it, experiment with it, and then give additional feedback and see how we can um, further enhance that functionality. Hi, Tabitha. But if okay. you have initial, um, initial Gareth, I'm so, hi, Chris. Thank you. Oops, sorry. No, Please no, no, go ahead, yeah. Gareth. Oh, sorry about, yeah, once again, thank you very much for an informative presentation, how it all works together, how there's different ways and how it's progressing. It's a very good question about, uh, I think at the moment, I think single sign-on is good because you set it up once and then sort of plug and go. Um, 
who knows where technology moves, but it's always good to start, start thinking about what how it can be improved. So once again, on behalf of myself and the Army team, thank you for your time and putting in uh, together this present, uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gareth, and uh, thanks for having me again this year. And I look forward to further discussions and also the rest of IMWOOD.